Hi, Doug Knoll here, and this video is how to handle confrontations like a Tai Chi master. I'm sharing three key practices that will allow you to confront any person about any problem without escalating into an argument. First, I want to talk about the paradoxes of Tai Chi, and I am a former Tai Chi master. The first paradox is, the softer you are, the stronger you are. And the second paradox is, the more vulnerable you are, powerful you are. So the key to confronting somebody else in the workplace like a Tai Chi master is to be soft and vulnerable, to make yourself powerful and strong. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. First, let's dissect a confrontation and try to understand better what goes on in an uncontrolled confrontation. So confrontation is almost always intensely emotional. It provokes feelings of anxiety, anger, feeling disrespected, feeling ignored, feeling an injustice or unfairness, feeling betrayed or betrayal, oftentimes feeling sadness or grief, and of course shame or humiliation. Confrontation is usually unplanned and unexpected, which results in an explosive emotional reaction. And in that situation, the prefrontal cortex goes offline and the emotional centers of the brain activate. And when that happens, we lose our ability to think, we lose our control, and we are subject to the programming that we learned in childhood about how to respond to anger and aggression. Now, there are two basic types of confrontation. The first type of confrontation, which we're going to talk about in this video, is when you have to confront someone else. The second type of confrontation is when someone confronts you, usually with a lot of anger. We'll talk about that situation in another video. So how do you go about confronting someone else? Someone has created a problem for you, and you have to confront them and you want to do it in a way that does not escalate the situation into a fight or an argument. So there are three parts to a confrontation statement. The first part is, how do you feel using an I statement? So basically, you're going to say something like, I'm angry, I'm frustrated, I feel disrespected, I feel unsupported, I feel unappreciated, I feel betrayed. You are going to make a statement about your feelings, your emotional experience. And it might be helpful to write these out on a piece of paper ahead of time so that you can get the correct statement of your emotional experience. The second part of the confrontation statement is the specific behavior causing you this emotional experience. And you want to make sure it's very, very specific. And you want to also make sure that it's a behavior, not a blaming, shaming, or judgment against the person who caused you to feel the emotions that you are experiencing. And the last part of the confrontation statement is the specific result of the behavior. Again, be highly specific and not overly general. Now you can use these three parts in any order, but the most important thing is to make sure that all three parts are in your confrontation statement. And it doesn't hurt to write out your confrontation statement before you have to deliver it to the person that you need to confront. So here's an example of what a confrontation statement might look like. When you delivered your report three days late, I became frustrated, angry, and felt betrayed because our team failed to support engineering as we promised, and the delay made us look foolish and incompetent. Now, once you've made that statement, in this case to the person who delivered the report late, stop and zip your lips. Let the other person respond. And after they are done responding, your response is going to be to ignore their words, read their emotions, and reflect back their emotions with a you statement, not an I statement. So here's an example of how the whole confrontation might look. When you deliver the report three days late, I was frustrated and angry and disrespected because our team failed to support engineering as we promised. The delay made us look foolish and incompetent. Now you stop 
And the other person might say something like, well, the research took a lot longer than I thought it would take, and I thought a late complete report would be better than an on-time incomplete report. And you didn't give me a lot of time to get this done, so I did the best I could. Now, you're going to reply back with the emotions that this person is experiencing. So you might say something like, you're frustrated and a little pissed off. You feel unsupported and unappreciated. You feel like you have been treated unfairly and have been disrespected. You're anxious and worried. And the other person will almost always say, yes, exactly. And then you can move into problem solving. When you get that yes or exactly and a nod of the head, you can say something like, well, then let's talk about how to prevent this problem from ever occurring again. And then you can go into problem solving to try to fix the problem or deliver whatever consequences are appropriate under the circumstances. And the other person will say something like, OK. When you confront somebody this way, you have successfully engage in a confrontation without escalating the problem into a fight. So remember, use the three parts of the confrontation statement, and then when the person responds, ignore their words, read their emotions, and reflect back their emotions with a you statement. Well, my name is Doug Knoll. I'm a lawyer turned peacemaker. I'm an author, speaker, trainer, and visionary. I'm co-founder of the award-winning Prison of Peace Project, and I'm dedicated to helping people just like you live fulfilled, peaceful lives. I offer individualized training and coaching to a select group of clients, and if you'd like to set up a call to explore the possibilities, email me at doug at dougknoll.com. And if you would like to learn more about emotional competency, sign up for the basic emotional competency course. It's only $189 at https dougknoll.co emotional competency. If you like this video, give me a like and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time.